Welcome to October's Lico Challenge. This problem is called Longest Common Subsequence. Given two strings, text 1 and text 2, return the length of their longest common subsequence. If there is no common subsequence, return 0. A subsequence of a string is a new string generated from the original string with some characters deleted without changing the order of the remaining characters. So ACE is a subsequence of ABCD, and a common subsequence of two strings is a subsequence that exist in both strings. So here with like A, B, C, D, E, A, C, E is, uh, A, C, E, e is the longest common subsequence be between them. So notice one thing is the longest possible common subsequence is going to be the minimum length between these two texts. So the truth is I thought I solved this before, but turns out I haven't. So this is a, a, a pretty standard dynamic programming solution because we already know we're probably going to have to do something recursive to do this, right? What we'll do, if you did it recursively, you'd probably go top bottom, but we can do a bottom to top dynamic programming. Uh, so let's go here. So say we have our DP array of a M times N matrix and each one of these represents the ending character for text one and text two. Now we had to add an extra row between them because we also need to count for a blank string. So imagine what's the longest common subsequence between A and a blank string? Well, it's zero. What about AB? Obviously zero, ABC, AB, all the way down. These are all zeros. So the first row is always zero. Same with the first column. If we took text two and said, what's the longest common subsequence between A and a blank string? It's zero, 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 all the way down, right? And technically this, well, I guess that's still zero. So what we'll do is actually start building this up from the bottom up. We'll start with the first character, A and A. If they're equal to one another, we know we're going to increase our common subsequence at least by one. But what we'll do is take whatever came before these characters that are equal, because these basically equal that one, whatever came before here, the number, we're going to add one to that. So here it's zero at this point, so we just add one. If the characters aren't equal, what we're going to do is take the maximum between the character without one character right before and the character without this character as well. So you can imagine, like, we already know A and A is uh, a common subsequence of one, right? What, what, what about if we add a B here? Well, it's still one. So it's almost like we're taking that number here, one. But we also need to check, well, what about A, B and whatever came before here? It was like like some, something came before here, we also need to check that because it's possible that this AB without this character is actually going to be longer. Um, so what we'll do is look up and look left and take the maximum of whatever's between that. So this is going to be 0 and 1, we return 1, right? And no, everything else isn't equal to A, so this just get carries, carries over all the way to the end. So this is a good example here. Say we're checking for uh, AC and A. If we were to just look behind for like this, like check, oh, well, what about just A here? We would bring a zero, right? But we can see that before when we had just that A, that's one. So we have to bring this down here. So the max between these two and same max between these two. But this these two are uh, equal to one another, C and C. So we're going to add one plus whatever came before that. So this is AB and A, that was one. And once we add C to both these strings, we have to add one there. So it's one plus one equals two. And this keeps getting carried over as well. So it's the same algorithm all the way down up until we get to E and E. And we're going to add one to that character right here. That's going to be A3. And that's the answer. A, B, C, D, E and A, C, E, the longest common subsequence is uh, A, C, E. Right? So that's a length of three. All right, so let's do this. Let's uh, first calculate the N and M which is going to be the length of text 1 and length of text 2. Let, next, let's create our DP array. And this will just have zeros uh, times what m for blank and range of n. And I forgot I have to add plus 1 here uh, to account for that blank string, because otherwise it's going to uh, have an index problem. All right, so four row in range of, let's see here, uh, I guess it's one to n plus one, 
and four column in range of one to m plus one. Uh, there's basically one thing we need to check, right? Is are these two characters equal? And if they are, text one uh, r. If this is equal to text two c, I think I need to subtract one here. Then we are going to update our DP array to be 1 plus DP R minus 1, C minus 1. Otherwise, we just take the, the maximum between the 1 on top and the 1 to the left. So max of DP R minus 1, C, or DP R, C minus 1. Finally, return the DP array, the last bottom right and let's make sure this works okay so that does look like it's working let's go ahead and submit it uh yeah there we go accepted <laughs> i'm not used to this new interface yeah so that's that's the solution i mean this is very very traditional dp array um time complexity it's going to be n times m as well as space complexity is the same and yeah, I don't think there's really much else to say to this. There possibly could be some other approaches um, that definitely can go recursive or might might have some sort of greedy method that would work, but this is definitely something that is standard and we should know, so. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.